meteorites, the extraterrestrial visitors that reach our planet, come in two forms, falls and finds. When a meteorite is witnessed falling from space and strikes the Earth's surface, it is called a meteorite fall. These incredible events can leave an unforgettable impression on those lucky enough to witness them. As these cosmic interlopers streak through the sky, they often produce a brilliant light show, generating a trail of fire and smoke that can last for several minutes. In contrast, a meteorite find occurs when a meteorite is discovered on Earth without any witnessed fall. These meteorites are often found buried beneath the Earth's surface or sitting on the ground waiting to be discovered. Although meteorite falls capture our imagination, the vast majority of meteorites found on Earth are actually meteorite finds. To put this into perspective, let's take a look at the statistics. This pie chart shows the total number of found meteorites categorized as falls versus finds based on their mass. As you can see, meteorite falls represent only a small percentage of all the meteorites found on Earth, while the rarity of meteorite falls makes them a special occurrence. Meteorite finds provide a valuable source of information for scientists to study the composition and origins of our solar system. Meteorites are broadly categorized into three main groups based on their composition, stony meteorites, iron meteorites, and stony iron meteorites. Stony meteorites, as the name suggests, are composed primarily of silicate minerals. They are the most common type of meteorite and are believed to be remnants of the early solar system. Iron meteorites, on the other hand, are composed mostly of iron and nickel, with small amounts of other elements. These meteorites are less common than stony meteorites, but can be much larger and heavier due to their dense composition. Stony iron meteorites are a unique combination of both silicate minerals and metal, with metal making up a significant portion of the overall composition. These meteorites are relatively rare and are thought to have formed from the boundary between the core and mantle of a differentiated asteroid. When comparing meteorites by the number of individual falls, some types like stony meteorites may be more commonly reported. However, when looking at the total mass of meteorites found, types like iron meteorites may be more abundant due to their larger size and weight, even though they may be less frequently witnessed falling to Earth. It's important to note that the perspective of counting falls versus total mass can result in different conclusions about meteorite abundances. To simplify matters, we will begin by discussing the various types of meteorites, starting with the most frequently encountered stony meteorites, chondrites and achondrites. We will then move on to iron meteorites and conclude with stony iron meteorites. By understanding the characteristics of each type, we can gain a better understanding of these enigmatic objects and their place in the solar system. The three broad groups of meteorites, stony, iron, and stony iron, can be further categorized as either differentiated or non-differentiated. Differentiated meteorites, such as achondrites, stony irons, and irons, have undergone significant chemical and physical changes due to complete melting in their parent asteroids. As a result, these meteorites have distinctive textures and mineral compositions that differ from undifferentiated meteorites. On the contrary, chondrites, which are a type of stony and undifferentiated meteorite, have not undergone full melting and still retain their primitive characteristics. Chondrites are one of the most common types of meteorites. Composed of chondrules, which are spherical inclusions found within the interior of chondritic meteorites, chondrites offer insights into the early solar system and the formation of celestial bodies. Chondrules are typically a millimeter in diameter and composed of silicate minerals such as olivine, pyroxene, and iron-nickel mineral. To find chondrules, one would have to cut slices from a chondritic meteorite and examine the interior of the specimen. Chondrules are often densely packed, and in some cases, they are so tightly packed that little matrix material can be seen between them. 
The matrix material in chondritic meteorites is composed of fine-grained, unaltered silicate minerals that encase the chondrules. The matrix material is thought to have formed from the dust and gas that comprised the solar nebula, the cloud of gas and dust from which the solar system formed. The texture of chondrules can vary widely from specimen to specimen, with some chondrites showing well-defined chondrules while others have faded or almost disappeared into the matrix. These modifications of the chondrules are thought to be a result of secondary processing, such as thermal metamorphism. Thermal metamorphism occurs when the chondrules and matrix material within a chondritic meteorite are exposed to high temperatures, causing recrystallization and blurring of the chondral textures. This heating can result from the decay of radioactive aluminum, called aluminum-26, which produces heat as it decays. As chondrules accrete onto growing planetesimals, they trap heat from the accretion process. Silicate minerals are poor conductors of heat, and as the parent bodies grow, they accrete layers of minerals that become hotter with increasing depth. Near the center of the parent body, temperatures can reach as much as 950 degrees Celsius, causing solid-state recrystallization of the matrix and thermal metamorphism of the minerals. The variable texture of chondritic meteorites, including the density and definition of chondrules, has proven to be a useful tool in classifying these meteorites. By examining the texture and composition of chondrites, researchers can learn more about the early solar system and the process that led to the formation of planets and other celestial bodies.